Hi everyone, let me introduce you our brand new project, Non-Intrusive Oximeter. In the hospital, they are used around the finger to check the heartbeat and the dioxygen concentration. But now, we are making a retrodiffusive oximeter, which means we could put it anywhere on the body. This is very comfortable, and most importantly, we could use it in the emergency cases. Now, I let my scientific team explain this to you. To measure the oxygen rate of the patient, we must have a close look at two types of hemoglobins. Hemoglobins are molecules carrying oxygen in the patient's blood. So we had a look at the oxygenated hemoglobin Hb and oxygenated hemoglobin HbO2. Oxygen rate can be calculated after the concentrations of those hemoglobins in the patient's blood. So that's why we measured the absorbance of uh, those hemoglobins which are linked to the concentration of the hemoglobins in the blood, thanks to the Bernambert law. So we have to choose two uh, wavelengths in a specific therapeutic window uh, between 600 nanometers and 1000 nanometers, meaning we have to choose two wavelengths in the red and near infrared uh, light zone, because beyond the, those limits of 600 and 1000 nanometers, no light is transmitted because everything is absorbed by cellular tissues and water. An experience to show that only red and infrared light is transmitted through a finger, for instance, is to put your finger on a white bright light and you can see that your finger turns red. So the wavelengths we chose are 660 nanometers and 950 nanometers. And those wavelengths were chosen so that the absorption rates of uh, hemoglobin and deoxyhemoglobin differ enough. Most oximeters use the light transmitted out of the finger, meaning the photodiodes collecting the light is put on the other side of the finger than the lens. But a small part of the light is also retrodiffused in the finger, so with our reflective oximeter we were able to collect the light with the photodiode on the same side than the lens. The photodiode uh, is able to measure the light collective of each LED apart. So here's a representation of the signal we can obtain for each LED, so the red light and the infrared light. And DC red, DC infrared corresponds to the average light intensity transmitted, and AC red and AC infrared correspond to the variation of light intensity collected during each heartbeat. Making a ratio of these measured values enables us to access to the oxygen rate of a patient's blood. It should be around 98% for a healthy patient. For the software part, we needed a support that could be programmed and reprogrammed easily. That's why the Arduino board came to our mind naturally. This compact circuit board allowed us to have a simple and handy setup to pilot the diet and to have multiple analogic acquisitions. The data are then separated into 10 second parts and exported to MATLAB for treatment. Then we take the Fourier transform of the two signals and we only keep the frequencies between 0.5 and 2.5 Hz, which corresponds to 30 to 150 bits per minute. After this, we only have to find the highest peak in this zone, which is really simple in MATLAB. Throughout the calculations, we make a lot of verifications and validations to be sure that the results we have are correct and that the display values are the good one. This is a very important part. We check, for instance, that the bits per minute between the two signals are the same, that the SpO2 value is credible and that the signal-to-noise ratio is high enough. For the hardware, we needed a compact device optimized so the signal we get was nice and treatable. So we first thought to this kind of shape, six LEDs on the outside and the photodiode in the middle. But then it was an ideal. So we came up with this 3D printed bad boy, two LEDs on each side and the photodiode in the middle. With this device, we can get the ideal absorption spectrum, which means high signal, low noise and no saturation. On top of the calculation of SpO2 and the heartbeat, our device is also capable of detecting heart dysfunctions like arrhythmia. This is done through Poincaré diagrams which shows directly the variations of heartbeat. Thanks for watching and see you soon.